So I'm not gonna lie, this is my third time trying to film this, and it's kind of rough. So bear with me. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so y'all are gonna be taking your test today over Sounder by William Armstrong. But what I wanted to do before you actually got that started was give you kind of a quick overview about what the book's about and kind of how the author uses everything to tell you what it means to kind of persevere and to truly care for others. Okay, so the book, and I also have my notes over here, so I'm going to awkwardly look off to the side, but I'm still here. Um, okay, so the book starts with a black sharecropper's family that's poor and they're hungry. So the father and the dog, Sounder, go out every night and they go hunting. And that hunting is trying to provide for the small family. Um, but hunting is bad that year. The wind is coming in. Winter is scaring off all of the animals really early. And so they're not having enough time to actually go in and prepare for the upcoming harsher times. Um, so they're not getting to eat nearly as much. But one day, the young boy, the main character that this book follows, wakes up to the smell of boiled ham. Sounds weird. But if you think about it, that's all they really had. How did they get it, though, is the question, right? Because they had been saying, like, there's nothing. They can't hunt anything. There's no raccoons. There's nothing. And they wake up to the smell of ham. So they go about their day. They're eating. They're having a grand old time. And then the deputies and the sheriff of this little town that they're in burst through the door. Why? They're accusing the father of stealing this ham from a local store. So as they're taking the father to prison, Sounder comes running after them, trying to stop the stop them from taking his master away from his family, and one of the deputies shoots him. Um, later, the boy goes out. He's trying to find the dog, but all he can find is a trail of blood and the dog's ear. So then what the young boy does is he takes that ear, huh, and puts it under his pillow because he thinks that by putting it under his pillow, it, he can magically wish Sounder to be alive. Gross, but you can kind of see how he is so desperate to hold on to something of his father. And what we'll get to see throughout the rest of the story is that the author takes Sounder and the father and parallels them together saying that Whatever happens to the father is going to happen to Sounder, and vice versa. And you'll kind of see that towards the end of the novel, especially towards the end of the novel. Oh, my computer's shaking. Um, but okay, so once the father is taken away, it the book kind of jumps forward to after Christmas time. And um, so the mother bakes this beautiful four-layered cake so the young boy can take it to his father in prison. And he is terrified that on his way there... That the townspeople are going to make fun of him. That he's not going to um, be able to get there from humiliation. And when he actually does get to the jail, the uh, jailer that's there stops him and makes him wait for hours before he can actually go back to see his father. And before he actually goes back to see his father, the jail man tears apart the four-layer cake. Um... But the most heartbreaking part of that is that the father tells the son not to come back to the jail. He doesn't want to see him in that state. And he also doesn't want the son to experience any of the hardships that he's having to deal with. But okay. So the next morning after he goes to see his father, there's a whining outside. And so he goes inside. He's curious. He wants to know what's going on. Come to find out, Sounder is sitting outside whining. And, but the dog only has one eye, one ear, and can only use three of his legs. So as the family is kind of gradually getting used to the way Sounder looks now and the way he acts now. Because remember, Sounder gets his name from the noise he made when he was hunting. Because he has this very vivacious, very loud howl. And now he's only whining. Um... So the boy is trying to get used to that with his whole family. Um, and it comes down to a couple weeks later, they find out that their father was convicted of the crime of stealing the ham. And so he was sentenced to hard labor 
where he would go county to county trying to serve his sentence in this really awful way. And what the son eventually starts to do is he tries to go to all of these different camps anytime he hears of one that's nearby or one of wherever it is, he'll go and he'll see it. But he finds this one of a working camp and he's leaning over this fence trying to see if he can find his dad and the jail person, the guard watching the group, whacks the boy on the fingers with a piece of iron and tells him to leave. And so it breaks open his knuckles, it's bloody and gross and blah. But, so what the son does is he runs to his school to try to wash off his bloody hands. And he finds a book on his way there. Okay? He finds a book. So whenever he gets to this jail, he, all these, not this jail, whenever he gets to this school, all these kids run up to him. He's like, oh, can you read this huge book? And all this stuff. Um, towards the beginning of the book, of our book, it talks about how he could read a couple of things. He could read... Um, signs, he could kind of read some Bible stories, but he couldn't read nearly as well as he wanted to. And so he gets to this school, and the teacher that washes off, helps him clean up his hands, gets him to want to come to school, and he wants to learn. Um, so whenever he goes home, he tells his mother about all of this, the opportunities that he's given, as long as he works while he's at the school. So the mother eventually allows this to happen. So he goes off and he studies and he starts to read. And whenever he comes home for the fall to try to help around the house, get everything else done, um, he's telling these Bible stories to all of his family and his siblings around him. Um, but one particular time that he comes back, he sees this man walking down the road and Sounder at the time, he's whining, he doesn't make a whole lot of noise, but for some reason on this weird day, this dog is running around, he's running down the road and back, down the road and back, and the mom thinks he's just going mad, like there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to what he's doing. But come to find out, the dog saw and sensed the father walking back down the road, um... And so, remember how we said that Sounder and the father's stories were kind of connected? Whenever they saw Sounder's father come, he only had use of one side of his body because a dynamite blast while he was working. And so now both him and Sounder are both kind of crippled in that way. But once this dog and this man are reunited, they leave one night to go hunting and Sounder comes back without his master, and the boy goes looking for his father, but he finds him dead. And soon after, Sounder crawls up underneath the floorboards of this house and dies as well. But despite all of their deaths, the family comes to a kind of a peace and resolution, especially the boy, because he has achieved the single most thing, single thing that he wanted most in the world, and that was being able to read that kind of literacy. So this, the author uses all of this to kind of tell how easy it is for people to be distracted by what's going on outside of the world and to, how, and to encourage people to still seek after what they want, but to recognize that their family does have a really big impact on their life. Okay, so you bared with me for nearly 10 minutes. Pretty proud. Um, appreciate you guys. That's all I got.